It has been another extraordinary few days in the Virgin on unhinged bid to unseat as Prime Minister the man who secured a massive landslide to deliver Brexit in 2019. This past weekend, the Prime Minister, uh, Haiti, media and the political class proved they are now officially out of control with a stunning lack of perspective over Boris Johnson given the challenges facing the UK and the world. I think Tory MPs must hold their nerve because there's a stark difference between reporting on a legitimate story and actively campaigning to subvert democracy. Sadly, we're seeing an overwhelming amount of the latter now. Like ITV's Robert Peston seemingly putting Boris Johnson behind bars in a jail cell in his constant battering of the PM during last night's news at 10 broadcast, sorry, Thursday night that was, following his patently ridiculous claim that Britain will become an elected dictatorship if the PM remains in office. And none of this shows any sign of abating. The media has decided this story will not go away until Boris is deposed. Look at today's Times front page headline. Grey report so damning, Boris will have to quit. So this is based on an unnamed official, no doubt, another Brexit-hating civil servant telling the newspaper, Sue's report is excoriating. It will make things incredibly difficult for the Prime Minister. There's an immense amount of pressure on her. Her report could be enough to end him. No official has ever been in a position like this before. We're all missing the point. Especially when Sly News party gal and COVID rule baker in chief Beth Rigby is leading the charge on Partygate reporting over the past few days of political paralysis thanks to this mainstream media obsession. Did you perform a huge U-turn today and decide to drop an attempt to delay a vote about investigating you by the Privileges Standards Committee? You were by worried price about price. a Conservative rebellion, no, weren't I you? Think Steve Baker, who is a key ally of yours, helped you get elected a key Brexiteer, said in the Commons today, the PM it should now be long gone, he should know the gig is up. That must hurt. Well, you, you said that you have nothing to hide, but you are also under investigation for up to four or five events you were involved in up to five more events. I can't comment on that. I know you can't, uh, but that, you might have more fines. You do accept that. You said on the plane last night when I said, are there any circumstances in which you might feel that your position is unsustainable or you might have to resign? I, are there any I said, circumstances? And, I said and you, you said nothing springs to mind. So you think that the issues around rule breaking at number 10 doesn't matter to voters. No, I don't. It doesn't matter no, and I apologise. At all times, did you always think in every single event you were not breaking the rules? So you never thought you broke the rules no, in I, any I, circumstance? You're, you're asking me to... Do you really believe that the party, that the country will allow you to, to lead the Conservative Party into the next general election? Right here, right now, you're absolutely determined to do that. But you will now be, I think, the first Prime Minister to be investigated for potentially uh, misleading the Houses of Parliament. Very serious, and that could you would agree, lead your resignation. At what point is someone like you going to say, enough is enough? I want to get on with the business of government and this man, as our leader, is distracting from that. Is there a point you have in your mind? Or does he, he accept that he broke the rules? Now. Well, he's accepted that the police have said that the rules were broken, therefore no, no, the but does he fight. accept that he broke the rules? But that is very different. Sir. Does he accept that he broke the rules? Is there any circumstance in which you would look at those reports and go, OK, fair enough, I'll quit? Do you still think you're an asset to the party? Are you an asset to your party in this election? And is their calculation that they're, they're safe for the moment, or is their calculation that they genuinely don't think he's done enough wrong to be kicked out? Because we've just been through a whole list of scandals. I mean, it seems there's been one a week, if not one a month. <laughs> You're with me, aren't you? We need to have a real discussion about the media bias out of control in this country. Now, some people suggest my position on Partygate is because I'm in some way in the tank for Boris and this Tory government. Those folk have purposefully short memories, given I was one of the PM's biggest critics over lockdowns. The lockdown rules, as I said, by the way, for two years, were an inhumane joke, and the PM's current predicament proves why he should have stuck to his libertarian roots and never have allowed his officials and paranoid members of his cabinet in a circle to run out of control. But it's easy to understand why number 10 officials are so frustrated, exasperated, and actually genuinely angry with the media, spurred on by Tory rebels with an anti-Boris axe to grind. As Andrew Pearce reports in today's Daily Mail, 
Yesterday, a poll found that uh, that Labour's lead had fallen to just two percent, while Tory canvassers were reporting back to Number Ten that Partygate was not a big issue on the doorstep when they were campaigning for the local elections on May the fifth. But you'd have no idea of that looking at virtually any of the mainstream media. Boris has apologised for Partygate 35 times. I am clear, like he is, that this was a huge mistake. It was. But it's not a resignation issue. He didn't believe he was misleading Parliament. The police have been quite frankly political in their approach to the investigation. Meanwhile, the hypocrisy from Keir Starmer remains breathtaking, given his quite obvious breaking of the rules as he downed booze during a so-called work event in Hartlepool in April 2021 and was caught on camera, as you can see there, doing so. As North West Durham MP Richard Holden says, the rules and the way they're interpreted should apply equally to the Prime Minister and to those who seek that office like Keir Starmer, and they should be applied equally by the police, where the Met Police or Durham Police. That's why he's written to his local chief constable, Joe Farrell, saying there is strong public interest in reviewing the decision not to investigate the Starmer incident further. Not to mention, just two weekends ago, scheming Sturgeon, getting away with a slap on the wrist from Scottish police and virtually no mainstream media coverage for breaking the nonsensical mask laws, she has enforced on her population. So I repeat, we need to have a real discussion about the media bias in this country.